let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Sorry, I was just coughing. I'm not sick. I just drank tea and it went down the wrong pipe. I'm so smart. Um, so today we are making the wristlet clutch by Sonar Sewing Patterns. Um, my friend Nicole designed this and it's so cute. I love the wristlet strap, the way it um, takes minimal hardware. And when you open it, it kind of creates like this zipper pull and a wristlet strap at the same time. Um, I've seen a lot of very expensive clutches that have like this type of design. So it's really cool to get to see how it's made and make it. Um, so I, in this video, I'm showing you guys how to cut this out with your Cameo. I'm no expert. I've just kind of flown by the seat of my pants learning how to do it over the years. Um, but this is vinyl from My Punk Broidery. This is the Geo Glitter. This is just a regular black marine vinyl. And then the zipper by the yard is going to be available on my website April 1st, Wednesday at 10 a.m. They're sold in packs of six colors per teeth color. So it's all antique gold, six different colors, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, The hardware is from mormino.com, my website. Uh, it just takes a half inch snap hook and a zipper pull. And honestly, if you don't have that, you could still make this. You could just um, either live, live off, leave off the wristlet strap or um, use a snap hook that will fit with your zipper or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's super cute. We use waterproof canvas to line it and it really doesn't need any interfacing because of that. Um, but you could add card slots, slip pockets. You could even add like a zipper pocket to the back of it or something. If you have the Victoria wristlet from me, you could add the card slots from that, the zipper pocket from that, you know, just have fun with it. Do something creative and shut your brain off from everything that's happening in the world. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been wondering where I've been. Um, and this is pretty much it. We've just been laying in bed for a really long time. You guys are so lazy. So this pattern uh, has just a couple of pieces. We've got our lining, we've got our main body panel, zipper tabs, and then our wristlet strap. And then it comes with a ton of different ways to um, kind of personalize it, um, make it really unique. And you could use these for almost any pattern as well. So that's really cool. I love that she included ways for you to customize it even further. All right, so right now I'm just figuring out how large I want the symbol that I'm cutting out to be. Um, so I'm going to guess about six inches by four inches. So there's my six inches by four. Something around there will fit nicely on the center of this wristlet. So I'm setting up my Cameo now. I'm using a deep cut blade. This is the original Cameo, so things may have changed since then. Um, this is the vinyl I'm using. This is a green geo glitter from my punk broidery so what i need is a cutting mat for the machine this painter's tape and then scissors to cut my vinyl and we'll get it set up so this is not going to be a professional tutorial there are people that know how to do this stuff way better than me but you're here so we may as well show you um so what i've done is i saved the image that i want to use to my computer it's this little leaf here and I'm going to resize it. I just Google image searched it and it, that's what pulled up. So there is a trace feature. We're going to select the trace area, copy that, change it from high pass filter to no filter and trace and then get rid of the original image in the background. And then if you have trouble seeing what it is, you can fill it in. We'll fill it in with green. Um, because we are tracing this from the back side, we want to flip it. So that way when it's front facing, um, we can actually see it correctly. So we're going to flip it horizontally. See now it's backwards. Um, and then when we click it, it's going to give us the size estimate. So right now it's like five by five, which, um, let's just make it like five and a half 
tall by almost six wide because I think that six inches is going to be really nice so it's front and center and then it's not too difficult to um, applique on. So we're going to cut a piece of this vinyl that is um, I'm going to say like eight inches by eight inches because we want plenty of room to be able to tape the vinyl down so it doesn't shift while it's cutting. Um, but we don't want it to be so big that we can't tape it down. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've got my piece here cut to eight by eight. I'm gonna go ahead and put this face down. The reason we're putting it face down is it's easier to cut through the fuzzy backing and then it cuts through the thicker front piece because you're gonna do it as a double cut. And honestly, my mat is sticky enough that I probably don't need to tape it down, but it's going to be safer to do so. So I've just centered it here. I don't know if you really have to, um, but I think it's a little bit easier. And then we're just going to use painter's tape along the edge just to really make sure it does not shift. There's nothing worse. If this is your first time doing something like this, I highly recommend using fabric you do not care about. Um, and then maybe make a little cheat sheet for yourself if your settings differ for vinyl. I'm saying this like I do it, but I don't and I probably should. Okay. So we've got that taped down, so we'll go ahead and feed it into the Cameo load cut mat okay, give it enough space behind and in front of course and then we will get it started okay so now we're gonna go to cut settings we're gonna set it to thick fabric thick fabric like canvas scroll down we're going to set the speed to a little bit slower maybe like a four we're going to set that cut blade to 10 and then where is yeah and then you're going to select double cut and that should work you can always run a test cut just to make sure um, but the double cut is going to be your friend so I'm going to set my deep cut blade to 10. Oh yeah, I can just turn this one by hand. That's right. So this can go as deep as 20, etc. But I don't want to cut through my mat. That would be bad. So I'm setting it back up in the machine. Um, make sure we've got this mapped out with our piece vinyl um should be good so i've got it like about an inch from the top and then two inches on each side so we should be good fingers crossed we'll hit send a silhouette Make sure that you're practicing again on a an extra cutting mat or something vinyl you're not super fond of or something you have a lot of extra um, and definitely start with a more simple design if you get more complex it's going to take longer and if your cut settings aren't just right you, you might mess them up all right so we're going to unload and hope that it cut through all the way I think it did, as you can kind of see outline, but moment of truth. Oh man, uh, it did not quite cut through all the way. 
So I'm gonna re-stick it down and I'm going to up my blade setting. Um, this kind of stinks because when you reload it, it's not gonna be 100% exactly where it was, but whatever. We'll make do. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 11-ish. See if that helps. And repeat the job. <laughs> It's not too far off from the original line. I think it'll be okay. But yeah, if this is for a more serious project, I would recommend not reloading, just grabbing a new piece of vinyl because you're never gonna get it exactly the same lined up. And you can definitely try loading it um, with the vinyl face up, but I found that it just doesn't work as well. So I just needed my blade set a little bit deeper. And then you want to be really careful as you're pulling it away because sometimes vinyl can tear or you'll get like weird fuzzy edges and you don't want that. So there's a little spot it had trouble with. Um, there we go. It's so cute. And then you can actually, if you cut it from a big enough piece of vinyl, you can use this again for something else. Um, and then it's like waste, not whatnot. So yeah, that's how easy it can be to cut vinyl with your Cameo. However, it is not always that easy. Sometimes you cry. All right, so now we're ready to get the main pieces cut out. Main body panel, this is my lining. I'm gonna go ahead and use waterproof canvas for the lining. That means we get to omit any interfacing we might have needed. Not that this calls for any, it says it's all optional, which is great. Um, I'm gonna use a black regular marine vinyl. It's not gorgeous but this stands out really nicely on it so love that and then I'm going to use um, just some scrap waterproof canvas for the lining now again there are measurements included in the pattern so you could just go ahead and use those um, but I'm just going to go ahead and trace this not with a sharpie it's too difficult <laughs> Some people can easily trace with a rotary cutter. I am not that person. Everyone always yells at me when I use a rotary cutter, so I won't do that today. I won't put you guys through that. So there's my two exterior pieces. Pretty easy. Ah, I'm so excited. Okay. Um, we'll hold on to that because we're gonna need to have that at the sewing machine for when we place our wristlet strap. Um, looks like I've got little scrap here. I can go ahead and cut my zipper tabs. Because I'm using a zipper tape that's like an inch and a quarter, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it a little differently. So it looks like this is about three fourths of an inch. 
by one inch, this little zipper tab that you cannot see because it's off camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut something similar, just making it a little bit wider than the pattern piece would normally be. Hopefully you can see. Not a big deal. She does give final measurements for the zipper in the pattern, which is great. Um, so then our wristlet strap, I thought it would be fun to make it out of the green, but I don't want to. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use my rotary cutter for that because, oh, that's so cool. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. It is cool, but I don't know what I was going for when I was saying that. <laughs> All right, so there's our wristlet strap. Um, let's cut our lining. Um, what's really cool about this pattern is she's also um, kind of made the lining a bit smaller so that it's not saggy inside your bag. I think that's super awesome. Love it when pattern designers think ahead in that way. So I'm just using those hair clips to hold the fabric together on the fold while I trace this so that I can cut out both lining pieces at the same time. So I'm going to cut through one side. My scissors suck because I've been cutting zipper by the yard. Um, and then I'm going to use a few more clips to hold everything together again so there's no shifting. have good zippers or not zippers but um scissors but I choose to punish myself with bad ones okay so that's it for lining if you want to add card slots I have no doubt there's an easy way to do it um with different hacks it just wouldn't be easy with waterproof canvas you could also add probably like a little slip pocket on the inside you could make it a crossbody just a really nice size. So we've got our zipper tabs, we've got our accent piece, we've got our wristlet strap, our lining, and that's that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my half inch snap hook and my zipper by the yard and my zipper pull, and then we'll get sewing. All right, so we're going to prep our zipper tape. I'm using this really pretty plum with antique gold. Um, this is a new color of my Zipper by the Yard. Um, Zipper by the Yard is going to be available Wednesday, April 1st, no joke, um, at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. I do have another video that is going up um, later on Monday to kind of explain everything, purchasing, etc. Hopefully we don't sell out as quickly, but takes forever to cut and there's three of us doing it so we do our best. Um, so I'm going to use my lighter just to make sure the ends don't start to fray. Okay look how pretty that looks. So you want to make sure that you're using a zipper pull that you can get a wristlet strap through. So these um, pop tab zip pulls that I sell are perfect for that with these snap hooks. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get started. First, we're gonna do the applique and then we'll work on everything else. All right, so you could choose to um, use a glue on the back of this. Um, I know Nicole, the pattern designer, uses a ton of Fabri-Tac to hold things in place, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use basting spray. I think it's a little bit easier, so make sure you're spraying the basting spray 
over a trash can um, and then over a piece of fabric that you don't really care about. I used to have like a scrap of cardboard that I'd use, but um, right now I'm just gonna use the back of the waterproof canvas because I don't plan on spraying too far out on the edges because I could use um, little pieces of double-sided tape to hold it down if you wanted to. Um, but definitely spray it over the trash can. I'm using a quilt basting spray for Sullivan's, but again, you can use double-sided tape to hold things in place. Don't feel like you need to go out and get something new. It's not necessary, but spray it in the trash can because this will get everything sticky. So it may be a little wet still. You might want to let it dry for a minute. Um, but then you can kind of lay it down, reposition. And then start in the center with placing and then spread out. So there's no like weird bubbles or anything. It's so cute. Um, so this is just really simple. Not a lot of turns and pivots and whatnot. And if you wanted to, you could use um, that leather edge coat I talked about in a live video on the edges, but I really just, I don't think it's necessary. Um, so we're gonna start at a point that seems like it'll be good to kind of hide where we're starting our stitch line. And I'll zoom in a bit more. There we go. Hopefully you guys can see. Um, if you wanna switch to a smaller foot, that might help. We're just gonna go nice and slow. And you can hand crank and um, use your reverse lever to kind of position the needle where you want it to go. You could use a matching color thread if you wanted to, but I just thought the white looked fine. Okay, we're getting towards the edge. And we'll pivot. And then as I'm turning, I'm just kind of holding the project and turning it slowly. And I do like to kind of backstitch at those corners. Things could start to lift and you don't want that. So here's a small curve. So I'm gonna lift the foot up along the small curve to make sure I can get across it nicely. Get past it, I guess. And then we're reaching towards the beginning. So I'm gonna hold on to my starting thread, make sure it doesn't get jumbled up. And then I'm gonna backstitch a couple times and end, pull my project off. Leave kind of a longer thread. And then I've seen people who actually grab the thread from the back, pull it through. Hopefully you can kind of see that loop. Well, I've still got my starting. I'm not sure where that one is. So I'm just gonna thread zap this one off, um, but then tie it in the back. Well, I could snip that now. It's been thread zapped. Okay. Um, but then you just kind of loop them through each other to tie it off.
And then if you wanted to use um, like a liquid stitch to hold it in place or something like that, you could. I am gonna leave my threads not super long, but I'm just gonna leave them. I'm not gonna trim them down all the way. Um, just because it's not gonna hurt having them in the back of the project. See how cute that looks? Okay, so now we can move on to the full pattern. All right, so I'm grabbing my zipper tabs laying them long ways next to each other. I'm gonna grab my half inch wide double-sided tape, clip it, and then you can cut them apart. I'm waiting for my iron to heat up so I can iron my zipper. It's not too wavy, but I don't wanna take any chances. There it is. So I'm just gonna use some steam along the zipper and Keep in mind, it is a nylon coil zipper, so it's okay to press it. Um, keep in mind, if you're using a metal or plastic, you may not want to iron it directly. So I've taken the tape off and then I'm gonna lay my zipper about halfway on that tab and then fold the top over. And this is a raw edge tab and it's very, very thin. So make sure that you've taken a lighter to the ends of your zipper. And then she says in the pattern it needs to be like 9.25 max. And I think I'm, I'm there. So I'm going to unzip my zipper pull a little bit. And with my fingers, I'm like pinching it together at the teeth so that this is as close as it can be as I'm laying it on the zipper tab, keeping that tape to hold it in place and then folding it over. So there's that. And then we're just gonna stitch along the ends there. And if you want to, you can do two lines of stitching, one on the inside, one on the outside. Um, if you guys have made the eyeglass case from Simple Artful Stuff, she has a really cool way of stitching down zipper tabs as well. You guys have to check that pattern out. Okay, zipper tabs are attached. And then just kind of zip your zipper a couple times, make sure everything has been properly caught. All right, so then you'll center your zipper face down. Looks like you're gonna have, um, how much is that? Maybe like a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch on either side or so. I'm just using clips to hold it in place. These are the rainbow clips that are available on my website now. I'm so excited. So the first thing I'm gonna do is baste my zipper in place. I don't want it to shift. You can use Fabri-Tac to hold it in place. Uh, you can also use half, not half inch, but quarter inch wide double-sided tape. But I think a little basting stitch never hurt anybody. And then I'll grab my lining and lay that face down. And keep in mind your lining is gonna be a little bit shorter than your exterior, that is okay. That's how it's written. Hopefully you can see it's just a little bit shorter. And then we're sewing, instead of that eighth inch we were basting, we're sewing at a quarter of an inch from the top edge. And then as you get close to your zipper pull, you may need to leave your needle in, unzip your zipper, and continue. And then we're gonna top stitch that, but you're going to pull your exterior fabric down and your lining is going to remain facing up. So you're only top stitching through your exterior and your zipper. So back stitching at the outer end, coming all the way down. Make sure you're folding that down.
getting close to my zipper pull, so I'm gonna lift up and unzip, and then back stitch when I get to the end. So we've top stitched through the lining, technically, the zipper by the yard, and then our exterior fabric. And then you can press with your iron if you want to, just watch out for your zipper tabs if they might be affected. And then we'll just go ahead and repeat those steps on the other side. You could also add a little applique image to the other side if you wanted to, or you could add um, a little label with your business name or something. Or just leave it plain, because it's the back. Who really cares? All right, basting. down so right now your lining should be facing right sides together your exteriors should be right sides together and this time I'm starting at my zipper pull so I'm going to unzip it to start and then a quarter of an inch on the top edge zip that back up I am using a stitch length of four throughout. So normally I would go a little bit longer for my stitch length uh, for top stitching, but I want it to be nice and uniform with the applique top stitching. So that's why I'm just keeping it the same. Um, so now we're top stitching the back side. You wanna make sure that you have three pieces of vinyl on the side you're not top stitching, not vinyl, but a fabric. So I've got my exterior, my lining, and my other lining and I'm only top stitching through my zipper and my back panel. Okay. So then I'm gonna unzip my zipper about halfway. We need to work on our wristlet strap. And the way she has us fold this is kind of unique. It's not something I've seen with vinyl, but it makes sense with cork, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. It's basically folding in thirds. So you're gonna have a raw edge there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use quarter inch wide double-sided tape just to hold one side in place. to use scissors. So she has us fold over one edge so that it's not raw. Hopefully you can see. And that's kind of what I do with crossbody straps made of fabric as well. So if you guys have ever seen me do that in a video, it's very similar to that. So we're gonna fold that in to the center. like that and then this gets folded like that so hopefully you can see there's that raw edge so I'm just gonna start at the back end the side I did not fold over hopefully I'm doing that correctly and top stitch you want to make sure you're catching all one, two, yeah, three layers technically. And then that edge I folded over, I'm cutting at a 45 degree angle on that folded side. Uh, editing Lauren, zoom in. <laughs> 
um, just so that it's not sticking out. Um, yeah, I can't. So it doesn't look great right here, but that's okay. But you can kind of, um, I've, I cut the, what fabric was inside at a 45 degree angle so that it wasn't super bulky and it wasn't pointing out. So this is our raw end and this is what gets basted into our... exterior panel and you want it on the same side as your zipper pull because you want it to be a loop when it's closed hopefully this is making sense so it'll be like this and then you'll unzip it and then you don't have a wristlet strap and then when you zip it back up you have a wristlet strap so you're gonna put this facing your opposite end Oh, is it really my video if I don't drop something? Okay, so this is our finished end. This is our raw end. And we're going to baste it in place there. So that way when we sew everything together, it's on the outside. Make sure your lining is out of the way. And you can kind of move it in towards the seam allowance further by like an eighth of an inch just for um, a little more durability. It's got a little more anchor inside so I moved it over just a tiny bit and basted it in place. Um, so now we're ready to sew it together. So let's do that. I'm gonna fold my wristlet strap on itself and add a clip just like that, just so it doesn't get caught in any seam that it shouldn't. I'm gonna unzip my zipper about halfway. I'm gonna grab some clips and some hair clips, some wonder clips and some hair clips. And I'm gonna start at my zipper. You're gonna push your zipper and your zipper tabs towards the lining. So they, they'll kind of bump up like that when you put your exterior pieces together. Again, here's the other side and it's bumping up towards the lining. And that's going to be true of almost any zipper pouch that you make. All right, so my wristlet strap decided to come out. We want to push that back inside. You don't want it on the outside because then it won't be on your bag like at all. And that's not really the goal. So I'm going to use the hair clips on the lining just because they don't need to be as firm of a hold. And then on the lining pattern piece, there are markings if you need them for where to leave that open to turn through. Um, so that's it all clipped together. I'm going to start at my lining on the side closest to me, about an inch and a half or so from the outer edge. And I think it's like a quarter of an inch seam allowance throughout. So as we get close to the zipper tabs, if you have a domestic machine, this might get a little tricky. So if you want to, you can grab um, like a hump jumper or a Gina jig or something to help level it out because the zipper tabs might be a little bit bulky and hard to get through. So on my machine, what I'm doing is just going slow and walking up that hill. I'm gonna backstitch and then it should be fine. I'm gonna backstitch at the top and at the bottom of my wristlet strap, just again for some extra stability and then continue on. I'm getting close to the corner, so I'm gonna leave my needle in and pivot and then just add a little bit of a backstitch for durability. 
continuing on. Again, I'm at that corner. Back stitch. Continue up. Getting close to that zipper tab. You want to sew next to it, but not through it. So if you are at a point where you feel like you're going to sew through it, your zipper is too long and you need to readjust. Rethink your life choices, maybe. All right, back stitching at that zipper tab. Moving on down. Pivot. Back stitch. Come down just a little bit and back stitch at that opening. So there is that. Uh, what I'm not going to do is trim down any of my exterior, but I am going to trim down my lining just a little bit, especially in those corners. I'm going to cut them at an angle. Um, and within the pattern, she has great tips for reducing a seam allowance and the bulk. So I highly suggest you get the pattern. And what better thing to do than support a small business at this time? Anytime, really. All right, so I'm going to unzip my zipper all the way. And I'm going to push out one corner first. Well, I guess I could cut those corners at an angle, too. Just make sure you're not cutting through any of your thread, seriously, because then it's broken. Okay, so I've got my middle finger in the point and then I'm grabbing it with my thumb to push it out. So there's one corner. And then on the other side, I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting my middle finger in the point and pushing it out with my thumb. And then you can unclip your wristlet strap. Where did you come from? And then at those zipper tabs, I'm taking my thumb and pushing it out. And you'll see how I did not sew through it looks nice. So again, my finger is underneath the zipper and I'm pushing at the tab. So you can see my nail kind of poking through there. Um, you can also use like a turning tool or a chopstick to kind of help you, but you don't want to use anything sharp because you could point, like poke through it and just ruin your whole project. <sighs> so I'm pushing out my lining as well so I can sew up that birthing hole. You can use your iron to press that. If you use waterproof canvas, make sure you iron with a lot of steam and not very long or you could melt it. And then I'm, yeah, pushing out all the air. I don't know if you guys have ever worked with waterproof canvas, but if you leave air in there, it doesn't really come out. So make sure you push out all that excess air. And then I'm going to add a little tag and I'm going to back stitch at the start, come down, I'm getting towards the center, so I'm going to pop in that little woven label. And I actually like to use um, little sewing clips to do that too. I find it a little bit easier to place it. We're getting towards the end, so I'm going to backstitch a couple times there. Okay. So then you just push that lining inside the bag, and I'm using my middle fingers again to poke the lining corners into the lining, or the exterior corners. You can give those zipper tabs a little push again and zip it up. And then we're gonna add our um, snap hook. So I'm just gonna pull 
pull this, push this through snap hook and then fold it over maybe like half an inch or so. And what you can do is you can add a rivet here. You can sew a little box stitch if you want, um, but then that's it. You've got your little wristlet strap here and you can unzip it and get what you need out and then zip it back up. It's so cute. And then I'm just gonna sew it down. I don't feel like using a rivet. They're very scarce right now. Okay. And I'm just doing a little box stitch. And then I'm just going to grab my lighter to prevent any fraying there. And that's it! It's so cute! I have been meaning to make this for weeks. I've just been too tired to do it, so I'm glad I did it today. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe, click the thumbs up, leave a comment, yell at me for being gone so long, whatever you have to do. <laughs> Bye guys!